Thousands of children are bullied in the supposedly safe environment of their schools every day. Such merciless behaviour by their classmates often leads many victims to take their own lives. Those that choose not to are left emotionally scarred long after leaving school. My name is Kevin Chapman, and I'm one of the latter. I was constantly picked on every day at school. This class photo is the only visual reminder of my time there. Needless to say, it drove me a bit mad. It's safe to say my experience has been part of who I am today. But I would have given anything not to have gone through it. And I very nearly did. stood there staring at this bottle of pills for at least 10 minutes. The longest 10 minutes of my life. I imagine my dad finding me on the bathroom floor. How my family would feel. And how my friends would feel when they found out. Then I thought of those who constantly taken the piss out of me. And concluded that they wouldn't give a shit. I suppose the first thing is you blame yourself. You think, you know, why why didn't you pick it up? And then it, because it was a time when we when I was ill. Did you have cancer? Yeah. So I'd felt that I was being I'd been selfish, and I hadn't really sort of looked at what you were going through. They used to call you names because they knew that you were going to blow up, didn't they? That's what they were waiting for and that's why I used to say to you, don't get yourself all worked up. I knew what had happened and, and things that had happened and the fact that you started telling me then that they were taking your bag and they were taking things out of your bag and hiding them and, and Dad was going mad at home about it. Well, I wanted to go up to the school several times from then on and confront the teachers and say, what's going on? Did you know this was going on? They, uh, at first, didn't really want to admit that the, the, the incidents were happening. And this is when I started picking up when nothing seemed to be happening. The teacher wouldn't do anything and Dad would go mad about that teacher. Um, I think Dad wanted to go down there and, and rip his head off, but it's not really something he could do. Uh, whereas I was at school every day and they kept telling me, don't, don't do nothing, don't do nothing. And there was an incident with your friend Paul Rowe. Yeah. Um, somebody I think somebody took his bag as well, um, and I found out who it was. They'd done it to you. It was the same person who kept doing it over and over to you. Um, and I was walking along the corridor with my mate, and we'd just been talking about it. And he came up the, up the corridor the opposite way. And as we met, there was a lift to the left as I was walking down, and he was coming the other way. And as I got close to him, I grabbed him and pushed him into the lift. By this time, I had him round the throat. And I told him that if he ever did it again, or he ever touched my brother, that I'd, I'd hit him and I'd hurt him. And no teacher would find out about it. And at that point, the teacher came down. And he didn't say anything to the teacher. He just walked away. I thought that you were very, very um, quiet in your responses when you came home and you hid up in your bedroom and you didn't really want to speak. And you were very sort of inward for quite some time. Um, before we got to grips with uh, what was going on. Um, then when it got a bit worse, uh, you became very angry. And then when you came home and wanted the paracetamol, we realised that there was something really wrong. I didn't really think it had got to that stage. Um, I don't know why. I was in my own world. Nobody told me. Mum wouldn't have told me. If she'd have told me, I'd have gone mad. Your mum was the first person you would see 
and therefore your mum would relate it because I was working in the Air Force and, and I would come home late and sometimes I was on a, a shift so I wouldn't get it, the information until the next day. I just tried to sort of talk to you and say and go back to the old way of ignore the bully, just don't react and it, it, hopefully it'll, it, they'll leave you alone. And you hope that everybody likes your child and in some cases they're different from everybody else but you don't want them to be different. The male sort of species always hopes that his son will be, able to be a strong lad and in my case, I can go back to my childhood, I was the last of seven and I was a sort of weaker character of them all and, and so I was reflecting it in you mm. and I was hoping it wouldn't happen again, that's why I wanted to do something about it. I mean I saw some things and also you used to confide in me and talk to me about them. It wasn't a case of finding out, it was a case of just sitting, being there and seeing. Um, I thought it was unfair, I thought it was nasty, I thought it was cheap, um, really. Um, and it also smacked of the same. Yeah, it upset me because it reminded me. Um, it upset me seeing you, how upset and angry you got. Seeing how much the people that were doing things were kind of getting off on it and it was making them worse was obviously upsetting to see as well. The only thing I thought I could do is just to be there and for you to talk to me. Um, I mean, I don't think there was very much I could do as regards to um, speaking to teachers or speaking to the people that were doing it. Definitely not speaking to the people who were doing it, although I did um, know I was friends with people who were friends with those people. I don't think that I would have had much influence or they would have had much influence, to be honest with you. And I don't think teachers would particularly would have listened to me. At the time, I hadn't realised how bad things had got for you. I didn't think that you know, things had got to that stage. Um, I really, obviously, I knew you were upset and I knew that they were getting to you. I, I've not for you know, a million years thought it, it would have come to that and I didn't actually find out about that until quite a long time after you, you didn't mention it to me until a while afterwards. With this film, I also want to find out what's being done about bullying today, both in and outside schools. Well, the work that we do is probably quite wide, but it mainly focuses on uh, both primary and secondary schools. And we negotiate work with and through them. And they'll focus on uh, largely things like uh, developing skills, being clear that they can access someone for help. And that relates to clearly a relationship with whether it's someone outside school or within school. We also try and give them opportunities to look at themselves more. There's obviously pressures on schools from you know, lots of different angles. Um, and they may at times um, not have the ideal sort of level of resources to be dealing with everything in the way that they would wish to. Something like peer buddying, for example, peer mediation, may be very effective in having a, an influence on reducing bullying. The majority of schools that I work with um, have a genuine commitment to challenging it, um, but you know the, the sort of level of success sometimes is dependent on. Uh, at times the amount of resources they've got available. Uh, it's, it's clear to me that the problem of bullying is high priority, it's high profile and it, it is a key issue for schools to be working on. Um, one of the things that's generally accepted is that there are issues around the sort of self-esteem that bullies experience and it clearly it may well be that they similarly are being intimidated, harassed or hurt in some way by somebody else and it's a knock-on effect from that. One of the challenges for anyone dealing with bullying is that they've got to look at it in terms of the children's whole experience. Yeah. So from the point of view of what they experience in the neighbourhood as well as at school, in the family and so on. Well, it's a damn sight more than when I was at school. Sorry, where was I? I've decided to come back to my old school, Western Road High, and find out what changes have taken place and what action has been taken in the fight against bullying. I have been back here in seven years since leaving, and swore blind if I did return, it would only be to burn the place to the ground. Anybody got a match?
We've just started a programme with six formers where we're training them in counselling skills and allocating them to tutor groups so that we've got an extra pair of ears and eyes um, to help. The difficulty is actually picking up from pupils, particularly where in most schools, I suspect, in Britain, there's a peer group culture that says don't tell the teacher. We've had uh, pupils who have been very unhappy with the bullying at school and right, justifiably, but they, they're not often the only issues. People shouldn't have to put up with it, but I'm very conscious that it, it's almost endemic within our society. I think if I'm absolutely frank, there's not enough being done in schools anywhere to combat all of the difficulties that we need to be addressing it would be almost impossible to deal with everything perfectly. Uh, I would like to see a lot more going on to support our pupils in all sorts of ways. If we can do everything that we can do, that's about as far as we can hope to go, I think. One thing I've learned during the course of this film is that I got off lightly. And no one has taught me that more than this man, Robert Nightingale. All this college was pretty laid back. You know, you had pool tables, a jukebox, trips away. I thought it was quite a large school compared to my previous one. There's, there's a, quite a lot of pupils there. Um, it was large, a large building, a lot of facilities and amenities. But on the other hand, once you got into the school, you're always living in someone's shadow and you don't want that person that's on your back most of the time to spot you or else that's it, especially in front of his friends. Yeah, you, you plan it all in your head, you know, but nothing ever comes through because you've got no allies, you know, you don't trust anyone to be an ally. I had one, one person pulling me around by my hair and he was running around with me in a circle Okay, and I had other people tripping me up as I was going round. So I was landing on my knees and stuff. As soon as he let me go, I punched the fuck out of him. But then they just all piled on me, and that that got too much, you know, and then that was it. They used a real victim then for fucking ages. They didn't forget it was a nightmare. Insecurity is a major factor in my life. Problems maintaining relationships, because trust is a proper issue. If things don't feel right, it makes me insecure. So I have to make sure things feel right. I, I might come across as laid back, but inside I'm pretty much in control of what's happening in my environment. It's not because I want to be, it's because I feel I have to be. You always feel inferior and insignificant. The only time I feel on top of the world is when I've had a beer or two and I'm in my own environment like this. I think you have to f learn to forgive and forget or at least try to forget. You just have to try and let it go, bud. You have to try and not let it take over your life. It won't last forever, just move on. The effects last forever, but the bullying won't. Little brother's not my little brother anymore. <laughs> Since you left school, going to college, you've become a lot more confident, you've made new friends, which was great. You've been a lot more approachable, a lot more easier to talk to. Um, you haven't been dwelling on this, what you had been going through. If the kids, all the kids who were at the school at the same time as you come and look to you now, I'm sure they wouldn't recognise you. You stand up tall. I'm you... six foot, I can't help that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you used to stoop down, now you don't. You stand up straight, you've got more confidence. You're broader, huh? ten times uglier, but <laughs> nothing really. <laughs> University is... It's just brought, it just blossomed. It changed when you sort of got to 17, 16, 17, when we started going drinking. I suppose we became closer when we left school than we were really, we were really at school. Yeah. Uh, there was all, we've always been close. We talked about it when it was happening, yeah. but I mean, it's always been something that you've, you've come through now. No matter how nasty and horrible it was for you, it didn't work out in the end.